This has been an, an intense period of activity for EU policymakers and regulators as they look to further reform EU financial markets. What have been the top priorities? So the top priorities, uh, I would say, are four. One uh, around the transparency and trading uh, regime under MIFIR. One around uh, the clearing landscape under EMIR. Uh, very much around the listing rules uh, under the Listing Act. And finally, the retail investment package to expand retail participation in the EU. One topic that often comes up is that the uh, EU capital markets appear relatively underdeveloped compared to other jurisdictions. Are these reforms intended to revitalize European capital markets? Absolutely. All these reforms that I've just mentioned are at the core of the capital market union. And that is the overarching goal, I would say, of uh, the European Union. Uh, what they are trying to do here is to make uh, the real economy rely maybe less on bank lending and more on financial markets, which is certainly uh, the case in the United States. So basically, they are trying to uh, make our markets more attractive, streamlined, and competitive. And that, that uh, allowing capital markets, the equities and the bond markets, to be a source of capital formation for companies across the EU. That's, that's one of the central goals. This is absolutely uh, crucial. It's paramount to make the capital market union a success and also to support the real economy. That's really what they have been trying to achieve here. We've been longstanding advocates for reforms to the transparency framework, including the introduction of a consolidated tape. What do you see as the key benefits that will emerge? The first one is that it brings the right level of transparency uh, in the EU, uh, which is absolutely uh, needed in order to level the playing field between um, all investors, if they are institutional investors, retail investors, uh, but also for intermediaries and market makers, so they can provide the right you know, service or right amount of uh, liquidity. The second point is very much around the quality of execution, how we can make this better, uh, making sure that what we offer to investors you know, is a great quality of execution, because competition doesn't stop at the borders of Europe, right? So they can choose any other region they want. But if you offer a great uh, quality of execution in the EU, then it will be very appealing to them. And the third aspect is very much about the resilience of market, because for investors, it's important, especially in time of stress. For example, during the COVID crisis, it was very important for investors to know what was going on. And it's important also so the prices are our true reflection of what is currently happening. So for all these reasons, it's very important that a consolidated tape, you know, uh, happens in the EU. Do you think the consolidated tape is, is the solution to an otherwise fragmented trading landscape in Europe? Yeah, especially in equities, because we have, I think the transparency was never too much of an issue when it comes to the equity market. But what was problematic was that we had so many venues where you could trade. And we didn't have one you know, place where we could look at the data. So if you were to ask 10 different brokers you know, what the price of a stock is, you would have very likely 10 different answers. So this is what the consolidated tape is solving. I think it is solving a very different uh, thing for fixed income, for instance, where the level of transparency was much less, um, essentially because of the length of the deferrals, which means that each time that a trade you know, occurs in the EU, you, you know about this trade only four weeks down the line. And do you anticipate those deferrals being substantially shortened? Yes. Closer to 15 minutes or one minute? What, do you, what are we expecting? Yeah, I think that uh, there was a lot of work done by the EU on this topic. They have been working very closely with the industry. Uh, and I think what is interesting is that um, they have given to ESMA, which is uh, the European regulator, the possibility to look at these deferrals and make sure that they were fit for purpose. It's great to know that it will not necessarily take another you know, couple of years to reach the level that we should be at, but that ESMA will work very closely with the industry in order to make the right assessment. And what's the process going forward? How soon are we going to have a consolidated tape up and running? 
So the process is that now ESMA has uh, to uh, run a tender. So basically, each instrument set will have a consolidated tape provider, and they have to choose these providers. They will start with bonds because of you know, the issue around transparency. I think that's the tape that they saw as being the most urgent. Then they will go into equities and finally into derivatives. So I expect that in the next two years, you know, we'll have you know, more results um, in this front. Virginia, EU policymakers have also uh, been grappling with the low level of retail investor participation in financial markets. What, what steps are being taken there? That's right. One of the things that policymakers have been looking at is the retail investment package. And this is very much about streamlining processes and making it easier for retail to be interested in investing in traditional asset classes. We have elections coming up in the EU. Is that going to derail the progress that's being made or cause uh, priorities to shift? It will certainly uh, alter the trajectory uh, of the regulatory landscape as we know it. I wouldn't say it will necessarily derail it, but it, we might see some different priorities for the new uh, European Parliament, so they should be uh, elected in June of this year. And later on, uh, we will have a new college of commissioners within the European Commission. And their uh, task is basically to set up the new priorities for the European Union uh, for the following years. So that might indeed affect you know, the regulatory agenda and, and some of the pieces that we have been discussing uh, earlier.